Hindu rituals and traditions and so on. But uh, the situation was an impediment in, in many senses. And Srila Prabhupada was, and Srila Prabhupada was working very diligently. You know, Srila Prabhupada described how he was always traveling and he was always selling his pharmacy, pharmaceutical goods that he produced. And there's a story how one time Srila Prabhupada was out traveling and then he got the telegram. And the telegram was from his home and the telegram said that uh, business has failed, the servants have stolen all the stock, you know, please return immediately. And uh, you know, for a lot of folks, if they would get a message that uh, their whole business empire or whatever had just collapsed around them, they may get into distress. And probably just smile and brought that and said, This is Krishna showing very special mercy on me. That he is removing things that are blocking me from becoming his dependent devotee. So Shiva Prabhupada was, he was very pleased. A number of years ago I was in South Africa and uh, up in Pretoria there's an Indian man, Naresh Mystery. Anyone know Naresh Mystery? Naresh is a banker. And a real nice, very nice man, such a nice man. And uh, and every time we would go up north in South Africa, we'd go visit Naresh. And, and his uh, his tradition is like you just walk into his office, and he'd always smile, and and uh, he would always say, "Oh, Vaishnav is come. I'm so happy." And then the next thing he'd do is he'd pull out his checkbook, you know, and he would just turn it around and put the checkbook in front of you. And he'd say, write the check, <laughs> you know. And so generally he'd always write the check for like an equivalent of about a thousand dollars or something like that and give it back to him and he'd sign it. Very nice guy. So it was the same thing. He said, oh, Maharaj, he said, write the check. So I wrote the check. And then I said, Naresh, how have you been? He said, he said, it's been difficult, Maharaj. And I said, well, why is that? And he said, uh, well, I was defrauded. And I said, what do you mean? I don't understand these terms so clearly. He said, well, there was a girl who was working as a cashier in my bank. And she had some agreement with some guys who were gangsters. So they were coming to the bank with checks that were drawn on a bank in Johannesburg. She was cashing the checks for them. But there was no money in the account that she was paying out from our bank. And I said, well, how much was your loss? And he said, $3 million. And I said, is it covered by insurance or this or that or the other? He said, no. He said, he said, I said, what, well, what do you have to do to get the money back? He said, well, I had to liquidate my home. I had to sell my home. All the savings that I put away for the kids' education, I had to use that. You know, everything that I had, basically, I had to liquidate it, you know, in order to cover the money. And I said, Naresh, how did you feel when that happened? He said, well, quite honestly, Maharaj, when it first happened, I wanted to commit suicide. He said, I felt so bad about it. He said, but then, after like the first wave, you know, the contemplation of suicide, he said, I reached down and I opened my desk drawer. And so he reached down and he opened his desk drawer. And then he pulled out, he pulled out Bhagavad Gita. 
know, she would probably probably would be that. He said, then I started deeply reading Bhagavad Gita. And I tried to, in, in that circumstance, for me it was like a wake-up call. That I had to increase and develop my dependence on Krishna and Krishna's words. So therefore I did so. He said, and that saved me. He said, Krishna saved me. And he said, I saw it really as being a test that was thrown in front of me by the Lord so that I would become more dependent on him. He said, no, and he said, and he said, and I'm recovering. And then I saw Naresh, you know, a year or so after that, I said, so Naresh, what's the situation? He said, oh, Krishna was so kind to me, a few good business deals, this, that, the other, whole amounts covered, you know. So here Prabhupada says, you know, Krishna does this, and he causes the devotee to become this completely, he causes the devotee to become completely dependent upon him. And then when we do become completely dependent upon the Lord, then our path for going back to the spiritual world becomes clear. And all the obstacles will become removed by Sri Krishna's grace. Okay, thank you very much, Hare Krishna. Any questions or comments? Yes, sir. Um, Maharaj, you're saying that um, Krishna's always making some arrangement to meet us on his side, he's always trying to do that. And uh, sometimes things go wrong, and, they, and you can say, well, it's Krishna's mercy. And then the alternative is, well, it's your stupidity. So, um, this, this Krishna, if you make a big mistake and you, and you do something very stupid, can you still say that the outcome is still Krishna's mercy? It's still Krishna's arrangement. Sri Prabhupada had a perspective that, that uh, failure is a pillar of success. And I know at times when I have blundered in my spiritual practice, what it has done, basically, it's opened the door for sadhus to be able to speak to me. It, it's, it's sort of opened the door for uh, me to be able to have discussion with learned and realized God brothers and, and uh, you know, wonderful devotees who actually, you know, help me to see a perspective beyond the perspective of my immediate defeat, you know. And then Srila Prabhupada said that whenever, whenever there is difficulty, you know, or whenever we do have some personal failing, that if, if we do have two, two things we can do, I guess, you know, one thing we can do is we can just cry ad infinitum about it and just, you know, moan and groan so much. And the other thing that we can do is remain, you know, very, very carefully and strictly engaged in devotional service and have our intelligence sharpened and purified by engaging in devotional service. And then by making a, like an intelligent analysis of the situation, we can see that, you know, this is, this is a situation that I shouldn't allow myself to enter into again. You know, it's, uh, this will sound really silly, but I just remember like those few short months when I was in Manchester years ago. You know, one evening, you know, I, it, when I went there, it was like real cold. You know, it was just springtime or something like that. It was real cold. And, and one night, you know, because I wanted to be warm when I slept at night, I put my sleeping bag right next to the to the radiator unit, you know. And somehow my, my knee sort of like, was like leaning on the radiator all night long. When I woke up in the morning, I had a huge blister on my knee like this, you know. So then by, you know, intelligent analysis, I was thinking, you know, 
That's not to speak of my knees on the radio here. <laughs> or, you know, if you, uh, if you stay in the sun too much without any sun cream, you're going to get burnt real bad, right? So by intelligent analysis, you know, I shouldn't stay in the sun too much. Or, you know, in the same way we hear that, you know, to advance in spirituality, you know, the heart should be free from, from passion, you see. And, uh, and, then, and then by intelligence, you know, we read the words of Bhagavad Gita and Krishna says that, uh, that uh, if you contact Rajagun, then Kama becomes ignited or lust becomes ignited and then he gives a dissertation that lust is the all-